I am now live with the Salmonetti source. How you doing, Pete? Doing well. How are you? Great. Hey, right off the bat, me and you, what we do online, you know, we have a whole bunch of, I wouldn't say a high percentage, but we have like 10% of individuals that, you know, Pete, me and you don't have to do this. We do it because we like it. But um, there's a few people, especially now with the Manny Machado mania, that we're seeing a whole bunch of Yankees fans that are unhinged. And primarily, yeah. Yankees universe has to be better than this. I yeah, am no. myself, yep, I am myself at the point where I'm getting death threats, threats, and I'm seeing individuals throw special needs individuals that happen to be Yankees fans, but hey, everybody's uptight now. They're just going to harass or troll them. Yankees universe, we are better. Me and Pete, we don't really have to do this. We do it because we like it. So what, what what's your opinion on that, Pete? <clears throat> no, I agree. I mean, we get out of hand. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of people online, and, you know, they get out of hand. And it's funny because... You know, I'm only in, a, basically now I just turned a year old on Twitter and on YouTube and all that stuff. So it was never something that I ever, I even really went out to target and go after. But I remember you told me about this and you said that there's going to be, you know, obviously hate and, and people that um, are, are, you know, unhinged and off their rocker, so to say. And I remember, I remember saying, all right, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what it's like. And yeah, I mean, I had people, you know, contact, um, you know, try to, figured out everything about my fiance's business and all this other stuff. So, I mean, yeah, like, um, knocking the business that she does and yeah, you know, I, I've obviously had my death threats and all that, but you know, it's like I told everybody, if there's people that are located in New York, don't worry. I'm there quite often. If you want to see me, you know, I'll be there and we could talk. So, and let's be realistic. Know, let's, let's tell people the history. Okay. I, I have other websites, etc. I have had trolls make fake links about me. Recently, you had a show or whatever in this venue. These same trolls contacted the venue, made a whole bunch of lines. They tried to cancel it. And then back Correct. then, you said you didn't know much about that. And I said, Pete, that's what happens on the internet. And Never then soon, believed it. Yep. And then fast forward months, months from then, you see it firsthand. I mean... Yeah, it's sad. It's sad because the community, the, the Yankee community, man, I've met... I've met so many good people. Like I've I've met so many good people that are that are from Twitter alone that just talk baseball and so many people that are that are really smart know what they're talking about. You know that I'm um, I'm even working with them on on different type of projects and things like that. So, you know, it overall has been good. The the hatred personally that I've seen, I'd be honest. Like people say, why do you block? I block because I don't need that in my life. It's pointless. If you're gonna keep doing it all day, every day, one after the other. I'm just going to block you. Typically, I don't like doing a blocking thing. I'd rather keep, you know, all my followers. And if you got a different of opinion, that's fine. But when it comes to the part of, you know, yes, you know, you're, you're talking about profanities. You're talking about people's family. You're, you know, it gets to the point of, of true insanity. That's exactly. What I'm just like, and then, right, really, we, doing. we don't have to do this. We're just doing it because we like it. I mean, it no, gets, not at all. Not exactly. at all. I agree. I agree. And uh, judging from this whole Manny Machado thing, people are on the edge of their seats and they're just going crazy. Yeah. What do you What do you think about it? I think Yankees fans, as as of now, they don't know how to handle this. So just imagine <laughs> when the Yankees, if the Yankees don't go out there and get Machado or Harper, if we're feeling the brunt of it, just imagine how the Yankees front office is going to get a <laughs> boatload of hate. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it's really insane. Um, the whole idea, you know, when the Yankees got DJ LeMayu, even myself, I said, well, now it's kind of seeming a little bit unlikely that they actually will go do it. But the more you sit back and you think about it and, and you want to keep holding on to – funny, during my podcast I did with uh, with Ryan Beck that's good, that I'm going to start doing on Sundays here in the next couple of weeks, he, he made a funny point. We talked about we, – we just somehow got to the movie The Lion King. And we were talking about the scene when Scar left Mufasa go, and I said, doesn't Scar just seem like Hal Steinbrenner? And and Mufasa's the Yankee fans holding on for hope, saying that they're going to sweep in the last moment. And then he just claws him and goes, nope, bye, see you later. 
it, it just has that feeling to it because again, like, like like you have said countless times, and other people have said also, you can't count the Yankees out until I mean you. And, and here's the thing too. People like to attack. I seen it. I seen it today. People like to throw, you know, attacks your way and things like that. But you're also not the only person that said Machado, you know, has a good chance to be a Yankee. This has been this has been common knowledge for years now. This is not something that just came out of left field. So I mean, it, it's it's funny. Um, you know, there's still a possibility. I still think the Yankees have a shot. Do I think it's as good as it was before LeMay, LeMayu? To be honest, no, I don't. But there is definitely a shot until the very end because right now I still feel like the Yankees have a move to make because they got a hell of a glutton in their infield. I'll tell you this. If uh, Machado goes for $200 million or 240 I mean, the Yankees, the Yankees have a lot of explaining to do. They don't it's, not, it's an absolute disgrace. If Machado signs for around $200 million, it it would have to go down as one as one of the the oddest, strangest moments in a Yankee off season for a player that they they need. I, I like when people say this. This is the common theme among a lot of Yankee fans when when you talk about Manny Machado, and this will be the big theme if he signs elsewhere. Well, we didn't need him anyway. He was he was just a want. He wasn't a need. Let me tell you something. You add Manny Machado to this club, and and this to me is always a need. If a player deeply makes your team better then they're a need if you sign one player and he greatly improves your team on both sides of the ball then that player is a need it's not necessarily a want he's a need he makes your team better the Yankees need to get better the Red Sox just won a World Series the Red Sox have been a better team the Red Sox have made the moves when they've had to make them the Yankees have not the Red Sox have a World Series for it. And let's the be Yankees realistic. Let, let, let's be realistic. If the Yankees don't go out there and, let's say, make a big move, show the rest of the league that they're going to be competitive, you know, show show up the Red Sox, they're just taking the motivation, me personally, of making these videos, of talking about the Yankees. Because if they're not going out there and, let's say, having the fan base believe that they're going to make all these moves and then people like me have to take the brunt of it because we're easily accessed. You know, anybody could hit us up on Twitter, say this and that. It just takes the motivation out. They're not willing to make the right moves to make a World Series championship caliber team. I mean, it takes all the air out the room. Yeah, it, it definitely um it definitely doesn't make you as uh as enthusiastic to go out there and make videos and and really talk with a community of fans, but you know, they they've spent money, so I'll give them the credit on that. They have spent money on multiple players. Have their team gotten better? Yes, I will say the Yankees have gotten better now. It it really depends on this other thing because at the end of the day, anybody can say what they want. I I don't understand and I never will understand. There's no way they can make me understand. Anybody can that the Yankees can sit out an offseason with two 26-year-old MVP candidates year after year, all-stars at 26, been in the league for a while, they're ready for agents, and they're only 26. To sit out on both of these guys, I don't understand it. And, you know, I, I was talking to a few people the other day, and somebody made the point of, and they asked me, they said, do you think that the Yankees just made their mind up when they traded for Stanton, that they won't go after these guys now because they got the guy they feel is the best. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case, and maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is the case. Maybe that's, that's a, that's the a bad approach is. because um, defensively, it's a very bad defensively, very bad was, yeah, defensively with Stanton, I mean, you're really not getting anything. It's a very bad approach. I mean, no, no question about it. If you know for a fact, if in that moment, the Yankees had a meeting and Hal Steinbrenner said, hey, look, you know, Brian, we can make this deal, but this is going to take us out of, you know, whatever, if everything goes the way we expect it, this is going to take us out of, of you know, signing in, in 2019, you know, Harper or Machado. If that was ever a conversation and the move went forward, it made no sense. And if it was ever the fact that getting Stanton would take you out of some of these guys, it doesn't make sense. Now, I'm, I'm in the belief that Stanton's going to have a better second year. But do I think Stanton is going to be better than what Harper or Machado would be? Especially Machado, who we, we, we forget. 
we forget that Miguel Andujar is arguably the Yankees one of their best hitters. He he did not even play the elimination game of the of the season of the playoffs. Horrible. There's an obvious upgrade in Manny Machado. An obvious upgrade. You don't have to be a genius. To say this is an upgrade. It's going to be disgraceful if the Yankees don't get him, if he's worth, if his market is at $200 million. Obviously, it's that, at that right now because nobody has signed him. And it's just going to be that, a, a, a disgrace. That will be, that will no question about it be a disgrace. And and if it comes to that point, you know, Manny Machado needs to make a decision. If it truly comes to that point and teams are offering them $200 million, at, at some point you got to go to your agent and you go, hey, look. If this is really the case and this is reality, this is what I'm looking at, nobody's budging, go back to cash and see what we can do. This is the team I want to go to. And hey. figure something out. Figure you're 26 years old. I mean, look, I don't expect Harper or Machado to sign a short-term deal. But, I mean, can't you do something with a second-year option? You opt out after year two, you're only 28 back on the market after Nolan Arenado? I mean, wouldn't that make a lot of sense? Exactly. In, in my opinion, Yankees universe has to behave better. I mean, just recently, some guy just tagged me and said, um, if Manny Machado doesn't come to the Bronx, everybody light my mentions up or whatever, trying to get people to gang stalk me. I mean, really? I mean, it's ridiculous. people act, act tough on the internet, but Pete, you know more than anybody. Me on me on the web, I'm saying, like, somebody wants to troll, I could give them their own medicine back. But in this instance, right. I'm not. But it's just ridiculous that these people are t threatening me because of yeah, the decisions the Yankees thing. are making. Well, well, here's my thing too that makes me laugh. Like, like I said it on my, I said it on my podcast yesterday, and I, I I've had when people brought it up even on live stream. You know, what is the information that feels? Can I tell them? You know, you got you, you've been doing this for a long time. You, you've had websites, like I said, you've had blogs before. Blogs were cool, and you've met people along the way. You know, this is not information that that you have created. This is information that you've gotten from other people, you know, and, and you put it out there. there. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's the same thing with Dan Clark. Like I even wrote, I even wrote to Dan Clark and say, Dan, look, to me, even if he doesn't sign with the Yankees, there's no reason for you to get off. You, you ran with something that you obviously thought was 100% accurate. If it, if it turns out, you know, it, it is what it is. If it doesn't, then it doesn't happen. And, and that's kind of that's the mentality that I'm living off of now because I, I've been on Twitter for well over a year. The people that still hate on me, me personally, hate on me with a long list of a track record that is 100% accurate. So if, if you feel that you can still find ways to hate, that's okay. I mean, if that's who you're going to be, then I don't need you. I'll just get rid of you. I'll block you out. But, um, I mean, the track record is, is there now. I try my best not to pay attention to it. But you are you are correct. It, it's a it's a very negative part of the internet, especially no no when it right comes now it's like really it's like that. really really bad right now. Everybody's it's, it's really everybody's is. anticipating Machado Harper whatever. It's like insanely bad. And Pete, imagine if I tagged you and said, "Hey, everybody, gang stalk the Samanetti source." What would oh, what yeah, would you no, reply I, to me with? Well, I agree. I had it. I mean, I had that. I had that when. And let's be fair here. Look, I took a beat down when it came to Patrick Corbin, and I never announced he was going to the Yankees. I said it all along as my opinion and opinion. Of, hey, look, the night before, <laughs> the night before Jack uh, uh, Patrick Corbin signed, Jack Curry said on the Hot Stove Show he still thinks to be a Yankee. No, I didn't see anybody blow up Jack Curry's mention or threaten him. You know, I, we respond to people. You know, I talk to people daily. That's how I've grown so quickly is that I have conversations with people. But, yeah, I mean, the, the death threats, the threats of – look at the look at the one that, that you – you know, you showed me that a guy wrote about me saying, hey, Yankee fans, um, it's time to to go hard after this guy, Yankee Army or whatever it was. Ridiculous. Like, like literally getting a group together to come attack me. Ridiculous. But um, th this is, uh, this is the, the new age way of life. I got a lot of people from – you know, from New York and actually grew up in, in difficult and rough areas that see it and laugh with me about it. And I even wrote recently, I said, you know, I hope some of these guys got big mouths when I'm, when I'm at Yankee Stadium. And, and everybody wrote back, no, they'll be quiet. Guaranteed they'll be quiet. And that's what happened. You know, sometimes people got nothing better to do and, and this is what they do. But it's not the way to, to show your real fandom of a team. It's kind of silly. Yeah, it's just disgraceful if you ask me. So, Pete, in these closing segments, what do you think about the second baseman position? Because everybody wants to know. Do you think uh, 
DJ LeMahieu is going to be that um, permanent second baseman or what? I, it's it's weird, man. It's it's weird. Um, I keep talking about it, and the more I talk about it, the more I kind of flip flop on what I think the Yankees could possibly do. And I want to throw a I want to throw something out there too that I'll that I'll get to here in a second. But if you look at the lineup now, I mean, let's let's say for an example, everything goes well. Everything goes well, and spring training, you got Tulowitzki who does great. He's healthy. He looks good. And if Tulowitzki's healthy, he's playing. Mark my words. Troy Tulowitzki's healthy. He's getting a shot to play. You got DJ LeMay, you looking good. You got Torres looking good. And the still around, let's say. He's looking good, too. Craig Bird looks good. And Voight looks good. You got four positions in the infield. You got a DA spot. Who knows how the Yankees will, will play that. But the best defender in the current Yankees infield is the guy they just got. And that's DJ LeMay. He's gold glover. Uh, you look at his numbers. He, he's one of the, the best overall defensive fielders in the National League. I don't think, like a lot of people say, well, this is Neil Walker's role. No, no, it's not. You don't, you don't give DJ LeMay $12 million a year to fill in the utility role and playing three times a week. You don't what, give him $12 your, uh, million a year. What's your gut feeling? Do you think the Yankees are targeting a, an ace or what? I think they're going to make a trade. I really do. I think the trade's coming. I I I, just, I can't make sense of it. Now again, maybe the Yankees. Well, let, let's go this way too. Maybe the Yankees feel that Troy Tulowitzki's not going to make it through spring training. Maybe they feel obviously what has happened the last years until who the hell knows if the last time he played more than 140 games or so might have been 09, something like that. I don't know. The Yankees aren't don't need him to do that. But maybe they just feel, hey, he goes down, you know, well, we can throw Glaber to short, and there you go, voila, it's kind of it's kind of fixed. But I don't know. I, I still got a different sense about it because I don't understand. If you're going to make your ball club better, you're going to make your ball club better to me by putting the best person on the infield. And LeMay is the best second baseman the Yankees have. Hands down, it's not even close. He's, hey, he's, hey, Peter, if you're wrong, I'm going to tag you and um, have a whole bunch of gang stalkers stalk you. You better be right, Peter. Yeah, make make sure you got your pitchforks and stuff outside my house. I'll give you my address. <laughs> All right. Um, this has, <laughs> any, anything else or you good? No, one of the things I want to say real quickly, too, is um, when it comes to a Miguel Andujar trade, let me say this, and, and this is something I thought about earlier. This has no um, disclaimer, as I like to say. This has no... Uh, source behind it or anything I've been told. What if Colorado's struggling? What if what if Colorado's struggling around the deadline and they know they're gonna have to deal Nolan Arenado? Do you do we not think that may not be on the back of the Yankees' mind knowing they could trade for anybody they want? But guess what? Um, yeah, but guess what? The Yankees are not doing that because we've seen it twice with uh two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen. The Yankees um they just don't want to go up the players. It's like um, like you said, say repeatedly, they're prospect hugging. Correct, correct. And, you know, that just ran by my mind today, and I could possibly see if the Yankees ever considered, you know, dealing an Andujar for a lot of prospects. San Diego got some of the best in the game, especially on the pitching side. And I'm, they, talking, you know, about, I'm talking about Nolan Yankees. Arenado specifically. Like, if a player can impact whoa, 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 a playoff right, right, right. run, I don't see the Yankees doing it because I don't know what they're thinking. I mean – We've seen it two years in a row, and especially right. trying to stay on the that luxury tax, too. I mean, what is this team doing? I don't know. That is true. I, I think Sonny Gray, you'll see, moved here in the next couple of days. Uh, whether that's just going to be a pure salary dump, which it very well could be, um, and get a decent prospect or two back, or um, or maybe he's packaged along with somebody else that a lot of people have been talking about here recently, but... I kind of feel like if you package along Sunday Gray with Andahar, you kind of you're kind of downing Andahar's value. And let me tell you why: because teams are going to fight with the Yankees that Sonny Gray is not the same guy he used to be. So they'll feel like they're taking on additional baggage when you don't really need to add that to Andahar, who's one of the best young hitters in the game. So it's interesting. We'll see what happens. We'll be there to cover it as it comes. But um, as of now, it's. It's really like you're, like you're walking through a maze to, to figure out what the Yankees are going to do. All I'm saying, we're the troops on the ground. Yankees front office, don't disappoint us because we're the first ones to feel the brunt of whatever decisions you make. Correct, correct. And, and overall, as just a fan base, 
it um passing up on the guys that the Yankees have a have a good chance now of passing up on it, it just doesn't make sense and there's a lot of smart fans in this and this uh on Twitter and there's a lot of smart Yankee fans overall and they're definitely not going to be happy about it so this has been the seven eighty source thanks a lot Pete no problem thank you no problem thank you no problem thank you